iron deficiency anemia is the topic for this video and um, iron deficiency anemia is the most common cause of anemia so a lot of high yield uh, things to discuss uh, before I get into everything I'd like to first talk about some of the elements uh, associated so first you have iron you have ferritin and then you have TIBC okay let's talk a little bit about each of these well iron well iron is the the main element that we're talking about and it's the deficiency of that that causes anemia so when you have somebody with iron deficiency anemia obviously the iron levels will be low now ferritin what is ferritin when you think of ferritin think of storage iron is stored in ferritin all right it's the storage form um, ferritin is uh, is basically you can think of it sort of like where iron is stored in the body it's a, ferritin is a group of proteins and inside these proteins is a core of iron this iron is stored in ferritin it's re readily available for any body requirement TIBC well first of all what does TIBC stands for it stands for total iron binding capacity we need to talk a little bit about this total iron binding capacity basically measures the blood's capacity to bind iron with transferrin so what this value is measuring is the capacity of iron to bind with transferrin now what's transferrin we haven't talked about that yet well we can put it over here when you think of transferrin think of transport transport is what transferrin does it's the protein that transports iron throughout the body so this is iron this is the main the main player in this presentation it's stored inside ferritin and it's transported throughout the body by transferrin and TIBC is measuring the capacity of iron to bind to transferrin so those are very important to remember now I wanted to talk about where is iron living in the body well we just said that it's stored mostly in ferritin which is true now in our entire body we have approximately 3.5 grams of iron okay in our body and a significant amount 2.5 grams lives in hemoglobin and hemoglobin as most of you know is a molecule that sits inside the red blood cell so if this is a red blood cell hemoglobin there's lots of hemoglobin molecules inside the red blood cell HB is an is a abbreviation for hemoglobin so of the total iron in our body a lot of it is actually inside the hemoglobin and the rest is mostly form, uh, found stored inside ferritin so that's very important to remember now when the body needs iron where does it get it from well it obviously gets it from the storage form but it can also get it from iron is available from red blood cells inside you have those hemoglobin molecules and remember of the 3.7 grams of iron in our body 2.5 grams are actually inside the hemoglobin molecule so when these red blood cells start to die aging red blood cells transferrin goes and grasps those iron uh, molecules and then transports it throughout the body so it's kind of easy to remember if you look at the T's T for transport okay so that's a little bit of a background now let's go into iron deficiency anemia now iron deficiency anemia what is the cause I mean why does this happen to someone well in men and women and children there's some of the more common most common reasons in women the most common reason is menstrual blood loss uh, in particular what we're really talking about is women that are premenopausal 
because if it's postmenopausal, they really shouldn't obviously be having a menstrual period. In men, by far the most common is uh, blood loss. Blood loss. I guess I should write that in there. Blood loss of what type? Well, through some GI tract pathology. Most commonly, some sort of carcinoma. Okay, most common. Now, in children, it's 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 a little bit different. Uh, the word blood loss shouldn't be. We shouldn't uh, talk about blood loss with children. In uh, in children, it's more of an iron increased iron requirement. Increased iron requirement. Now, that doesn't mean that every single child is going to have iron deficiency, but increased iron requirement may contribute to iron deficiency. Now, let's get rid of the word blood loss here because I want to talk a little bit more about reasons women can get iron deficiency. Well, increased iron requirement here. Increased iron requirement. But, but when? They're already full grown. During pregnancy. Pregnancy. Pregnancy and lactation. Okay, very important to remember. So these are the, some of the most common reasons a person can get iron deficiency. Another reason is, uh, if this is the stomach, um, this is the beginning of the small intestine, uh, this is the duodenum, this is the jejunum, you remember the stomach. Iron is actually absorbed in the duodenum and jejunum. So when you have, in the upper jejunum actually, so when you have uh, any kind of malabsorption uh, problems, you can get iron deficiency as well, especially in these parts of the small intestine. All right, let's talk about symptoms. Well, the symptoms of iron deficiency are essentially the symptoms of anemia. And the symptoms of anemia, uh, most of you know, include uh, being very tired, short of breath, feeling cold, a uh, person can feel dizzy, pale, person can have pallor. There's another very interesting symptom of iron deficiency anemia that uh, happens, it doesn't happen always, but it can happen, it's called pica. Pica is basically when a person has abnormal cravings uh, for things that people normally don't eat. Um, cravings for things like ice or dirt or even paint. It's very strange, but this can happen. Other uh, more physical exam findings are uh, things that you probably see this a lot on board exams. They talk about these things a lot and maybe even show you some pictures. Glossitis, those concave nails. These are all directly resultant of iron deficiency. Now let's talk about diagnosis. Well, we touched a little bit about this. Um, uh, earlier. So we got hemoglobin, iron, ferritin, and TIBC. All right. So you're going to order these labs, and what is the result? Well, nobody really orders a hemoglobin. You order a CBC, and hemoglobin is part of the CBC. Well, obviously, it's going to show that the hemoglobin is low. That's essentially the definition of anemia. And then obviously, if it's iron deficiency, the, the serum iron will be low. Now ferritin, remember what's ferritin? Ferritin is this, where the iron is stored. And if iron is low, then this is going to be low. Now TIBC will be high. Now why is TIBC high? Well, remember TIBC, which stands for total iron binding capacity, measures the blood's capacity to bind iron with transferrin. And transferrin is the protein that transports iron. Now what happens when you have iron deficiency is that the liver produces, liver produces more transferrin because this is sort of a compensatory mechanism. The liver responds, there's low iron in the body, so the liver responds by making more transport molecules, which is transferrin, um, in an attempt to maximize the use of the little iron that's available. That is why the TIBC is high. And um, that's basically the main blood tests involved. The other type of tests that you could do, remember we talked about this a little earlier, especially in men, is that uh, you can suspect uh, some sort of GI tract malignancy or GI tract pathology. Um, 
especially if the person's telling you they're having bloody stools or they're losing blood in their uh, in their stool uh, this test is very very important so finally we get to the treatment now the treatment is obviously replacement you have to give the person iron and the prescription is ferrous sulfate most commonly 325 milligrams twice a day and interestingly ascorbic acid uh, given along either as a pill or as in the form of orange juice can help uh, enhance iron absorption that can be uh, beneficial now I wanted to show you a couple vignettes and then I wanted to also show you a diagram so the first thing is this diagram this is a normal peripheral blood smear so these are RBCs, red blood cells, and these this is what they normally look like. And this is a peripheral blood, blood smear of iron deficiency anemia. Now very important because these terms, this terminology is going to be seen on a lot of licensing exam questions. Microcytic hyperchromic. What does this mean? Microcytic refers to the size. It means that the cells are smaller and you can clearly tell that they are hypochromic hypo low chromic refers to color the color is paler and you can see clearly they're not as they're not as colorful now that's very important um, microcytic part of it has actually measured in the CBC you remember I talked about the CBC and that the CBC will show a hemoglobin that is low well, the CBC will also also show that the anemia is microcytic with a lab value called MCV. In iron deficiency, the MCV will be less than 80. Normal uh, MCV is between 80 and 100. Okay, very important. Now I'll finish off with a couple of vignettes. Here we go. 25-year-old gravid up, 3, para-3 female, presents with history of fatigue, ice craving, and dyspnea, difficulty breathing shortness of breath. Upon exertion, she was unable to tolerate her prenatal vinyl bones during pregnancy because of nausea. Examination reveals paler and spooning of her nails. Vital, vital exams are normal. There is no lymphadenopathy or hepatosplenomegaly. Well, we talked about a lot of this. This is the pica. And remember, uh, women that are pregnant can have an increased iron requirement. And she's got quite a few physical exam findings that are very consistent with iron deficiency anemia. Let's talk about a man. I don't have a very long clinical vignette for you, but this is okay. 68-year-old man presents with fatigue and dark stools. On examination, his vital signs are normal, but he is pale and has a rectal mass. Later biopsy of the rectal mass reveals adenocarcinoma. Well, we talk about this in men, the most common cause of uh, Iron deficiency anemia is sometimes a GI tract pathology, bleeding in the colon due to some uh, cancer perhaps. And the blood that comes out in the stool oftentimes can be dark, especially if the bleeding is because of a lower GI tract uh, pathology. So that's a brief presentation about iron deficiency anemia.